Welcome to Q Weekly, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Stevie. I will be your host for the evening. Coming up in Q Weekly tonight, we have Joe, who is out at Vic Tennis, who have held a tournament for Midsummer. Also, we're going to be having an interview with Ross Watson, and we have our very own Elizabeth Blast doing Q Calendar. But at the moment, I'm very excited to have two guests with me. I have Kathleen and I have Rose. And uh, welcome Thank to you. Q Weekly. Hi. Now, Kathleen is the co-publisher and... Uh, Rose is the editor for a new lesbian magazine, Diconoclast, which is out now. It is uh, currently bi-monthly and it is um, a lesbian magazine which I think, which already is getting a, quite a lot of popularity. So congratulations Thanks, on getting Eddie. it off the ground. Now first of all, what does Diconoc Diconoclast <laughs> mean? Apart from meaning something very hard to say, it's about being unorthodox. It comes from the word iconoclast. Right. We've stuck dyke up the front because we're hoping this will be a little bit unexpected, not just the sort of things people will assume to see in a lesbian publication. Right. And what prompted its creation? Um, we started it. Kathleen uh, works in an organisation with women who are trafficked and has been doing that for a number of years. And she said to me right. one day, look, I'm really sick of doing things that are quite hard and depressing, even though she does lots of good work. And I said, well, why don't you do something? There was a magazine called Lesbiana that folded about a year ago, and there's been a real gap. So I said, why don't you start a magazine? And she immediately started ringing around, and it just happened so quickly. So. Right. Well, the, well, from the support that you've already got and the feedback that you've got from what you were telling me earlier, it's obviously gaining quite a bit of a momentum in quite a short period of time. Uh, how many people do you have working on the magazine? There are four of us directly working on it, mm -hmm. two publishers, Rose editing and a designer. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, we've, I think last time there were 12 contributors and a whole lot of other women who are writing and taking photos and things. Right, so people, so there's quite a myriad of contributors, not only from uh, dedicated personnel, but also from readers. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. and, and there'll is... be more in the future. I mean, there'll be new ones if each edition, so. Right. Now you're hoping to uh, be a bit more frequent than bi-monthly as, uh, as the issues progress, I understand. We thought we'd start off um, conservatively and build up and then hopefully go to monthly. So we'll see how we go the first year and if there's enough support, we'll come out every month. Right. Now, the, now I'm just having a, a look through, <laughs> uh, so what uh, are some of the things that are actually in here? The first few pages are profiling Dykes at Midsummer, so we mm -hmm. pulled out some of the lesbian stuff that's going on. We've got the lesbian rowing club, the two, the comedy duo, duo who did My Life as a Dyke. They've got a new show, so we profiled that. Yes, Dyke is right, who we saw at the uh, at, at the Midsummer launch at mm -hmm. Fed Square. Yep, um, and you know, so we've pulled out some of the Midsummer stuff. We've got some humour at the back. We've got some short stories. Um, opinion pieces, a bit of mm -hmm. to get a bit of debate going, uh, a bit of investigative journalism. We had someone write about the pink surfer, and she went out and interviewed women who have used online dating. So it's mm -hmm. a real mix, and that will vary as you know more women come forward, depending on what their interests are. But we're hoping to keep it mixed like that. Right now, um, now what will set this apart from other publications that are out there? I guess. One is really obviously it's just for lesbians, mm -hmm. so it's content specifically for women. It's got a really strong Victorian base yeah. and I guess where it is, as Rose said, quite mixed, so it's not just straight journalism. There's space for us to do, um, to have short stories, to, to have people doing, you know, we've sort of got our own Andrew Bolt there doing a bit of an opinion piece, um, some really... Um, I guess stuff you wouldn't necessarily have space for in other newspapers. Um, right. And we're really hoping to build up something that lets Dykes know what, what's happening in Victoria in a bit more depth than you might get in other places. Right. Because I understand from uh, people I've spoken to in the past, it's always been a bit of a concern uh, with them that they feel that there's not really much out there or they don't really know about what is, mm. uh, that what is out there. Uh, now, to remedy that, <laughs> uh, now we're having a look. Now there's also, which is a very, which will be a very big point of interest to our lesbian viewers. There is what's on, um, which is on page 20 of, of this issue. Uh, so, which is also a very good 
and we'll have more of that in the future. We've done some interviews with various um, women who run groups around the place, so we'll have a lot more. As we build up the kind of audience and people know that we exist, yeah. they can send in you know, information about what groups they're running, what events are happening, so that'll just get bigger and bigger. Right. And especially if we go monthly in the future, that, that as well will address that kind of um, gap in terms of what's going on for lesbians. Right. Now, uh, in the time that we have left, I'll just mention that uh, if anyone does want to contact you, uh, they can either email you on info at diconoclast.com. Now, that should be appearing at the bottom of your screen right now. Uh, that's D-Y-K-O-N-O-C-L-A-S-T. Or alternatively, they can contact you on 9384-6123. Yep. And your website should be up and running in a few weeks as well. Yep. Diconoclast.com. Yep. No way you. <laughs> dot com, dot com. <laughs> now, very quickly, also the launch. You've had an unofficial launch at Salon Kitty, um, but uh, there is an official launch as part of the short story competition for Midsummer on the 3rd of February at the Glass House Hotel in Collingwood. Uh, it's at 7:30 p.m. and the actual launch itself should start about 8 o'clock. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, and also the, uh, like I said, the uh, Diacona class is on sale right now. It's uh, for on sale and it'll be on sale at Carnival as well for five dollars, and it's also available in shops. Right. Great. Well, thank you very much, Kathleen and Rose, for joining us. Thank I'm, you. It's fantastic that you've got something like this out there, and we um, hope to see you both again very soon. Thanks a lot. Thanks Great. Mark. Great. Thanks to you very much, girls. Now let's have a look at Joe, who is at Vic Tennis, uh, who held a tournament as part of Midsummer. Take it away, Joe. Right, I'm here at Elstonwick Tennis Centre with Paul and Tim from Vic Tennis. Hi guys. G'day, how are you Jan, going? How are you? I'm okay. Now, Paul, um, who are Vic Tennis? Vic Tennis is a gay and lesbian uh, tennis group. Uh, we operate throughout Victoria, but we don't discriminate just because we're gay and lesbian. We have straight people as well um, playing in our competition. And um, are you affiliated with any other sporting bodies? Uh, we're affiliated with Tennis Victoria. Um, they help us develop our club, uh, help us with um, development of players, competition and advance, um, programs as well as coaching and technical services and all those kind of things. They're, they're great for us and uh, they're really helping us in 2005. Okay, excellent. And uh, Tim, how many members do you we have? We have approximately 150 at the moment on our books. And how often do you get together? We get together every Sunday for our social competition or social um, tennis and that goes from 1.30 to 5 here at Elstonwick Park and starting Monday the 7th of February we have our Monday night competition mm -hmm. which runs through until rightfully May okay. um, and obviously with Midsummer happening we've got our Midsummer tournament happening outside now yeah. Um, so yeah we, we meet a fair bit. Okay can either of you tell me a bit about uh, today's tournament and the significance of it? Uh, today's tournament is the Midsummer 2005 tournament. Um, the significance is that we have it annually. Um, it's open to, to players interstate um, as well as Victoria and um, within our club. We've had about uh, 80 people show up today, uh, various grades A, B and C and we've had women's as well. Um, what else? It, it, it's, it's more it's the fact that we're going out the back at the moment. Yeah, it's still going. Um, we, it, it's been great in the fact that the last um, two, three years we've grown considerably each year. Um, thankfully, Elswing Park have had us here for the last two years. So each year we grow. It's just great um, to see so many new faces come in who aren't big tennis members and join in for the day and then ask questions about our social and our, our comp through the year. So. The whole significance of this is that um, it, it's huge for, for, for big tennis, it's huge for the gay lesbian community playing tennis as well. And um, how many tournaments throughout the year do you have, roughly? Paul? You know? um, oh, roughly, I think this year we've got a, a 2005 calendar. I actually did it myself. <laughs> and it starts when, February the 7th. Um, yes. Our, our yeah. Monday night competition starts on February the 7th, but we've also got like round robin tournaments in, in March. Uh, we've got a fundraiser in April. Uh, we've got sing singles round robin in May. Uh, we've got our club championships also in June. Sing singles and doubles. Um, so we've got about six or seven throughout the throughout year. Throughout the whole year, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not including just our 
general Monday night comp and Sunday socials as well. Okay. And um, for today's event, did you have any awards for the players? Today's event, we've uh, provided uh, winners with a medallion and runners up with medallions. Um, Monday night competition, we have A grade and B grade uh, trophies that go to the winners. Um, and we also, again, have medallions for winners and runners up. Last season, we, for the first time, had um, awards for the players as well, and they were peer nominated. Okay. Um, so best uh, serve, best uh, return of, of game, mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun. Guys enjoy themselves, so we intend to have that in the new year as well. And uh, what about uh, fitness level? Is there any particular, do you accept anybody with any? Absolutely, any anyone can come off um, the street and come in on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, we start them off on a Sunday, so we see what level they are at. Um, and yeah, if they haven't hit for five years or they hit every week, we always invite them in and come and play mm -hmm. and have fun on Sunday. Excellent. And uh, what about any plans for the gay games that are coming up next year? Uh, huge. Um, we're actually working, uh, we're actually, with all the money that we're raising with our tournaments and stuff, we're, uh, we're putting some incentive to some of our players to go out there and um, play in the gay games. Um, so we'll help them with a um, bit of accommodation and food and that kind of stuff. But as uh, far as I know, I think there's about 20, 20 guys going out to the gay games. Excellent. And um, now, how about if people want to get to any viewers back home, want to uh, get involved with Vic Tennis, uh, what would you suggest? Uh, I just suggest to, to ring, um, ring Tim. No, no, don't ring him. Go to our website. Our website is www.victennis.com. There's no AU in it. Um, all the information is there on the website. Um, we've got our contact details as well. Tim's the, the club captain, so pretty much if they're interested in playing, call Tim or send us an email, which is all on the website, and we'll get back in contact. Yep. Okay, excellent. Thanks for your time, guys. Great. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. Thanks very much, Joe, and thank you very much to our great friends there at Vic Tennis. Please stay tuned. We're about to take a short break, and we'll be right back with an interview with Ross Watson and Q Calendar. Stay tuned. You're watching Ben TV on Channel 31. I'm Slash Darling. What the f are you doing here, Melanie Breasts? This is my spot. No, this is everybody's show. It's Channel 31. Oh, fabulous. Please watch Ben TV Enjoy on Channel this. 31. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Q Weekly. Earlier this week, Alan Duncan caught up with famous painter Ross Watson. Let's go and have a look at the interview. Midsummer Festival is upon us again, and as usual, there's an eclectic program of visual arts all around the city of Melbourne. This week, it gives us great pleasure to talk to one of our homegrown artists, Ross Watson, at his eponymous gallery in North Carlton, on his latest exhibition, Galerie de Glass. And we're here with the man himself, Ross Watson. How are you going, Ross? I'm good, man. So. Good, thanks. Welcome to Q Weekly. Thank nice, you. Nice to have you on. Now, when did you, what age were you when you discovered this, this gift that you have? Uh, well, I love painting and drawing when I was uh, a young boy, like five or six. So I, was, I was actually still playing rugby league, but I preferred, oh. preferred to being in the art room. So, oh, rugby league, I can see a, uh, a seed being sown for the sports theme here already then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, probably. Although, I mean, at that stage, I mean, I, I had, if you told me that I'd, I'd grow up to, and, and make my living from painting um, AFL players. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like sacrilege, uh, isn't it? I wouldn't have believed you. I mean, it, I probably first started with uh, painting Ian Roberts. That's probably, yes. I don't know, probably 10 years ago or something now. Um, I made a series of paintings of him uh, before he came out. Uh -huh. um, and then I painted Grant Hackett for the Archibald one year. And then uh, more recently with uh, Brodie Holland and Paul Curia from Collingwood, that yeah. came about through um, the, uh, a curator at uh, uh, National Gallery of Victoria, 
uh, Jason Smith invited me to make a painting for the Spirit of Football exhibition, which oh, you I might see. have seen last year, uh -huh. which was at Federation Square. So, um, and he said, well, seeing as you paint figures so well, why don't you paint a real player? So uh, I threw the ball in his court and <laughs> said, well, so speak, yes. who are you going to get to pose for me? So, and Eddie McGuire was involved in the, uh, this exhibition at the NGV. So Brody Holland was, um, was organised and, uh, wow. and then once uh, Paul saw the painting I made of Brodie and he was up for a painting and... Yeah, so he was quite yeah. cool with the whole thing, no reservations. He was, he yeah. was. And I don't, I don't ask all of my models to take their pants off, but he was happy to take his pants off, as you can see. You see, he's got a very attractive little tattoo here. Wow, and talk about... Three of, three of his mates, four of them got the same tattoo they went out on a drinking so session a on, on a holiday, a yeah. bit of a bonding wow. thing, that's right, on a, ho on a holiday, I can't remember where the holiday was, but uh, he, uh, they all ended up with one of these tattoos, which is normally, as you can see, just under just his speedo line him. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought we should sort of, you know, see just a little bit of that. And but, write your work. <laughs> but, but on a serious note, with this painting, the, the, the thing that I really wanted to do and to capture was you so rarely see images of, of sports in, in the media mm. where they're looking a bit vulnerable or, or and in this painting there's there's a that quality of, mm -hmm. of kind of reserve and you know whilst it's still very kind of sexy and no matter where you walk in this room his eyes follow you it's true, everybody's they all been... Say that. Everybody. <laughs> the um, exhibition is titled La Galerie de Glace after the, the Hall of Mirrors, isn't it? The That's Palace right. of Versailles in yes. France. Yep, true. And I believe that was the inspiration for it, well, is that right? Well, well, the series title came about from... I, I was taking photographs in the, the Hall of Mirrors at mm. Versailles and I'd seen uh, this incredibly attractive uh, young black guy and he was... Photo, uh, he was photographing something else in the room, and mm. but I saw his image in nice. one of those grand mirrors that had hundreds of parts to the mirror. Yeah. So it was everything I saw in the mirror was you know distorted. Mm. So I saw uh, sections where there were uh, cherubs from paintings reflected across the hall, and uh, and then him or a section of of, of this uh, guy. And uh, so these splinters of old images and new images, and See. and uh, I thought, what a great title for for series and for wow, and for, for this series in particular, where uh, you know the, the contemporary figures, um, uh, it, you know, placed in these uh, classical paintings. Um, in a way, when people are looking at these paintings, that you can't help but reflect on the original painting. Like yeah. if the model is holding a, a, a phone mm. and then you've got a 16th century woman sitting at her writing <laughs> yeah. desk with a quill. Yeah. Uh, and you think about, well, it might have taken six weeks for her letter to reach mm. uh, uh, as opposed, as opposed to, to his, a, a text SMS. message yeah. or something yeah. like that, which is uh, instant. Um, shit. Okay. Mm. I was going to ask you if you had much patronage from the queer community, but hey, I mean, let's face it, you've got people like Elton John and Ian himself buying your, your work, haven't you? That must be pretty, yeah, true, pretty gratifying. True. Yeah. The, the majority of, of my work is uh, um, supported by mm. the queer community. So how long can we see all this fabulous work here during the <coughs> summer? Um, the exhibition runs until the 12th of uh, February, so it's Saturday the 12th, right. and it's uh, on uh, th uh, Thursdays to Sundays between 11am and 6pm. You can support Ross by getting along to view his exhibition at his own gallery, the Ross Watson Gallery, at 465 Nicholson Street, North Carlton, until the 12th of February. Also take a look at his website, www.rosswatson.com. Thank you, Alan, and thank you very much, Ross. Now it is time for Q Calendar. Over to you, Miss Elizabeth Blast. Thanks, Stevie. Welcome. Got my first pointer. I sent, I sent a message out and I've got my first one from the Star Hotel. Oh, Thanks, fantastic. Wendy and Ellie. It's a little bit cliche, but I kind of like it. I love it. Magical powers, this one. Right, I've got a lot to get through, so let's get on with it. 
This is what's in Melbourne this week. Now, first off, I want to tell you about a few surveys that you might like to be involved with. The first one is the largest online survey of GLBTIQ people uh, on health and wellbeing. Now, you can go to www.privatelivesurvey.com.au if you'd like to be a part of that survey. The other one is a study on trauma and sexual abuse identity, examining mental health and trauma experience in the GLBT community. And if you'd like to be a part of that one, you can contact Andrea or David at tell someone at rmit.edu.au. And the last one is a local study on successful and happy lives of lesbian, same-sex attracted and queer women. So if you're happy and you know it, contact Mary or Ia <laughs> at mary.heath at flinders.edu.au. Go ring me up, go to the website if you need those, that information. Now, Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne, the Equal Love Opportunity Commission. Do you like that? The Equal Opportunity Commission is holding a community forum on sport and sexuality. That's next Monday, this time next week, uh, from 6 till 8 p.m. And it's at Victoria University, Flinders Street in Melbourne. And that's exploring personal stories, community attitudes, best practice and law, la 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 and which will go a long way to ensure a fair, safe and fun sporting environment for all. And you don't have to be involved in a particularly queer sporting group to be involved in that one. The Docklands. You might be going on this. Summer cruising. You going on that? Ahoy! Ahoy! Now there, there are two cruises apparently. There's a Smirnoff Midsummer Day cruise which leaves this Saturday 5th of Feb at 4 Victoria Dock in the Docklands. That, that's boarding at 1pm and uh, departing at 2pm sharp. Otherwise you have to swim. Ooh, I'll be and checking there's for the Archers Away. Beg your pardon? I'll be checking for my invitation. From who? I don't know. Anyone. <laughs> the Archers <laughs> Away Mecca Night Cruise. Oh, really strange. At 7 p.m. boarding and 8 p.m. departure, and that's again at number four Victoria Dock. Thirty-five dollars full, thirty dollars concession, or fifty dollars at the gangplank. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I love how you say gangplank. Yeah, Paran <laughs> at uh, uh, Chapel Off Chapel. How many times have you said Chapel Off Chapel this midsummer? Chapel Off Chapel. And Kesara, Luke Gallagher, and Adrian Kirk, for that matter. They're holding an open mic. Uh, Thingy down at uh, Chapel Off Chapel in the courtyard this coming Thursday. $12 full, $8 concession. And the special guest is Pastel Vespa, who I absolutely love. She's gorgeous. And uh, anyone can get up and give it a go if you're game. In St Kilda, lovely St Kilda, mm -hmm. there's the Queer St Kilda History Walk. And that's this Sunday, 6th of Feb, and it starts at the entrance to Luna Park, otherwise known as Candy's House. <laughs> and that's at 4 p.m. And ten dollars full, five dollars concession, and you go for a bit of a trek around St Kilda, looking at all the gay icons and monuments and statues and beats and things. I'm not quite sure. But there's a lot apparently. <laughs> now in Glen Huntley, down here, Glen Huntley, the, we're having the St Dorothy's Day Mass, which is at St Agnes's Church, 114 Buran Road in Glen Huntley. And uh, sermon, uh, the sermon's by Bishop Philip Huggins, and there's some music. It's free, but there's a $10 charge if you'd like to stay for an El Fresco supper. Oh. Have you confessed lately? Um, yeah, three times last week, twice last oh, night. You do it to me all the time. Mm. Fairfield, over here, the Bent Cranks bike ride, which is a ride to Westerfolds Park in Templestowe, and uh, it's 30, 35 kilometres. I can't oh. even drive 35 kilometres. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, mate, you can buy your lunch from the uh, Mia, Mia <laughs> Gallery um, uh, cafe thing, or you can bring your own. It's this coming Saturday, 5th of Feb, Fairfield Park Car Park, Heidelberg Road, and it's $5 for $2 concession or Bent Crank members. So the last thing I'd like to mention is, if you've got a community group or a club, send me a fridge magnet and I'll put it on my board. And you can send that to PO Box 6256, St Kilda Road, Central Victoria, 8008, 8008 for a fridge magnet. Or if you'd like me to, give me to give you a shout out, you can email me at feedback at bentv.org.au. That's all I have for. Thanks, Wendy and Ellie. And you never know, they just might be watching. Steve. Thank you very much, Lizzie. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth Blass, ladies and gentlemen. Now, thank you very much for staying tuned for Q Weekly this week. Stay tuned this Thursday at 10.30 for, uh, for Face to Face. I will see you in the very, very near future. Good night.